Hello, my friends. Today we're solving a puzzle called Coping Strategies. It's by Philip Newman, and it was originally posted in GAS on April 5th, 2024. During my first attempt at recording this today, Philip actually DM'd me on Discord and my notifications went off and it was all very embarrassing and I was about to tell you that you needed to all be cross at Philip and shame him in the comments for interrupting me while I was recording, but actually he was telling me that he'd been solving a puzzle pack unrelated to gas that I had just released and was really enjoying it. So thank you, Philip. I appreciate that. Um, that pack is called Bitty Bites, by the way. If you're on the Cracking the Cryptic Discord or a number of other puzzle discords, you should go check that out. But it is definitely not gas. Very, very hard puzzles. You've been warned. Anyways, let's go ahead and solve this together. So this is a gas puzzle. It is one of Philip's puzzles, and it is a German Whispers Killer Sudoku. So we have normal Sudoku rules first, so we're placing the digits 1 through 9 once each in each row, each column, and each outlined 3x3 three three region. Then we also have some German Whispers lines, so these are these bright green lines, and the rule for those is that digits that are adjacent to each other along the line, so for instance these two digits, or these two digits, have to have a difference of 5 or more. So like 1 and 7 would be fine because their difference is 6, but... 2 and 5 would not be fine because their difference is only 3. Finally, we have some killer cages. So we have these cages, they each have a total marked in their top left corner, and the digits in the cage have to sum to whatever total is indicated there. Generally, you'd also need to mention that digits can't repeat in cages. Here they can't repeat in cages anyways, because all of our cages are contained within single rows, but in a lot of killer puzzles that is not the case and you need to look out for that rule. We're not going to be worrying about it today. Let's get started. So, in, um, in Killer Sudoku, we have uh, certain cage totals that can only be formed in one way with particular numbers of digits in a cage, and one of those is 6 and 3 cells, which is always 1, 2, and 3. 7 and 3 cells is always 1, 2, and 4. So let's start on that. So we know that there's a 4 in one of these cells, that's a 1, 2, 4 triple, and that tells us that there has to be a 4 down here, because there's no 4 there, there's no 4 there. And if we look over at this 8 cage, there are exactly two ways to make a sum of 8 and 3 digits that can see each other. Those are 1, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 5. And now because we've already used 4 in the row, we can't be doing the 1, 3, 4 option, so this has to be 1, 2, and 5. So now I'm going to do something that I often do while solving German Whisper Sudoku, which is I am going to color for what I'll call high lowity. Um, so a little trick for German Whispers, because the, diff the digits that are adjacent to each other always have to have a difference of five or more, that causes them to alternate between low digits, so one, two, three, four, and high digits, six, seven, eight, nine, as you go along the line. And that means that once you've placed some low digits or some high digits, like we have here, thanks to the killer cages, we can color the entire line regardless of what we do or don't know about what goes on the rest of it. You also can never have a 5 on a German Whispers line just because there are no valid digits in Sudoku that have a difference of 5 or more from the number 5. So with those two things, we're now going to look right here. So the thing that should jump out to you at this point is that we have a 21 cage and it has a low digit in it. And even if we were to make that digit the highest possible low digit, which would be a 4, the other two digits in this cage would have to sum to 21 minus 4, which is already 17. And that is, in fact, the largest total that we can have for two cells that see each other in Sudoku. So this is going to have to be maximal. It has to be 8 plus 9 to make 17. Now, 4 and 8 don't quite have a difference of 5, so we'll have to put the 9 there. Now, this is going to be our 8. This is a low digit. It's 1, 2, or 3. But the thing that should really stand out here is that we have this 9 cage that has a high digit in it. And that's almost the inverse of this situation, because the largest, or sorry, the smallest high digit we could ever use would be a 6. Even if we made this as small as possible, we only have a total of 3 left over to fill the rest of this 9 cage, so that would have to be a 1-2 pair. And so we do know that that is minimal, because that's the smallest we can possibly make that. Now 6 does not have a difference of 5 with the number 2. We have to go down one further to the number 1. We fill in the rest of this cage by making it 612, and we can now finish this cage. Let's make some symmetrical deductions down here at the bottom of the grid. So 24 is 789, 23 is always 689. We now know there's a 6 here. That rules 6 out of these cells. There are only two ways to make 22. One of them is 589, which is good. The other is 679, which is now disallowed by the fact that we have a 6 in the row. So that's 5, 8, and 9. 
And we're going to work basically, well, entirely symmetrically with what we were doing up at the top of the grid. I'm going to do the same coloring, except now instead of starting by coloring low digits, I am starting by coloring high digits. So there are my high digits, and now my low digits are going to be blue. Okay, now we look over here. Once again, we have a 21 cage with a low digit in it, and we already worked out the logic that tells us that that low digit, it has to be as big as possible. It's got to be four, which will be surrounded by two nines. That will be an eight. Right here, we have a nine cage with a high digit in it. The high digit has to be as low as possible, according to the logic we used over here. So that's now a six with a one next to it, and the last digit in the cage is a two. What we just placed up here clears this up. That's now a five and an eight in that order. Now I'm going to pencil in some more low digits, and more interestingly, perhaps, I'm going to pencil in my last high digit in this region. I know this number has to be high because of the effect from the German Whispers line. I've already used 6, 8, and 9 in this region, so we have to make that a 7. We can't pair a 3 or 4 with a 7. They're too close. In order to get that all-important difference of 5, we have to go to either 1 or 2. So this digit is going to be either 1 or 2. Same with this one. Same thing going on up here. This can only be a three. That's our only low digit remaining. These will have to be either eight or nine. I'm also going to take a moment just to fill in some pencil marks across these three central boxes horizontally. The only remaining digits here are three, five, and seven. Same here. This will also be a three, five, seven triple to finish this row. We have a three and a seven here already, so we can place our five. Right here, I need a 4, an 8, and a 9 to finish the row. One of those has to be low, so that'll be my 4. And then here is either my 8 or my 9. That's my 8-9 pair. Similarly here, I need to place a 6 in these three cells to finish this row. And my other two digits are both low, so to place a high digit, I have to make that one the 6. So that's not a 6, and this is not a 4. Now, what next? Let's see what we've got. That's not a 4 by Sudoku. That's not a 5, just doing like a tiny bit of cleanup here. That's not a 9, that's not an 8. This is kind of optional at this juncture. So these need to be high. This high digit is restricted because we already have a 6 and an 8, 9 pair in the column. So this now has to be a 7. That's my only remaining high digit. And 7 can't go next to 4, so I can now place my 4. The 7 also disambiguates this 3 and this 7. I can eliminate 1, 2, and 3 from this cell because I have them in the column. That's now a 4, which has to be next to a 9, and that cleans all this up. So that's not a 4. These are 1, 2, 3, and 5 to finish region 8. The 5 here tells us where the 5 is going to go. The 3 here tells us this is not our 3, so that's a 3. And a 6 can't go next to 3, so here's my 6. And... My last pencil mark in this column will have to be either an 8 or a 9. And in this column, what do I have left? I need a 6. Now 6 can only go next to 1, so there's a 1. And I can get rid of 1 there and clean this up. Just do a little bit of Sudoku there. Fantastic. Okay. That can't be a 1 or a 4. I'm trying to find the... Uh, symmetrical deduction with that, but I believe I've already found it. Um, so that 7 makes this a 3, and now I have a 5-7 pair here. This is either 7 or 8 because it has to be high. This has to be a 5. That's the last remaining digit that I could possibly place there. This digit has to be high, so that's a 7 or an 8. That gives me a 1-2 pair and a 7-8 pair in this row. So what are my remaining digits in this row? I need a 3, a 5, a 6, and a 9. So the first thing that jumps out to me with that is that 3 can't be in these two cells, right? It also can't be here because there's a 3 in column 9 already. So there's my 3 in the row. This is not a 5. This is not a 5 because there's a 5 in the column, so that's going to be a 5. And now do I get to disambiguate the 6, 9 yet? I don't believe that I do. I'm going to leave that on the table for a moment. Okay. So now if we go down here, this can't be a 1, and I'm really just going down here at this point because I know that there is going to be a symmetrical deduction just based on the appearance of the puzzle, the fact that the cluing is symmetrical. So here I need a 1, 4, 5, and 7 to finish the row. 5 is not going to go in those cells, and it's also not going to go in column 9, so I can place my 5. This is not going to be a 7 because of the 7 in the region. This is not going to be a 7 because of the 7 in column 1, so I can place my 7. Here I have a 5 that clears up this 3-5 pair. I have a 5 that clears up this 5-7 pair. And then we can finish this 
this column and also column two by placing a four and a six here. That goes that way around. And then we also need a four and a six here. There's a four in this row already, so that's a six, and that is a four. These are six, seven, eight, and nine. And those turn into two pairs, which actually turns into an eight and a seven right there because of the seven in the row. And I think we can clear all of that up now. Cool. Okay, so let's finish it off. We need a two, a three, and a seven. So that will be the seven. That's a two and a three. That's a one and a two. That's going to be a four and a one by Sudoku because we already had a one in row seven. That's now a four and a one, a three and a two. And now how are we going to resolve the eights and nines? Ah, I see I have a nine in column four. So that will take care of my eight, nine pairs because unfortunately the German whispers rules, well, I guess the German whisper rule here does tell us that that had to be a nine. That's another way of seeing that because four can't have an eight next to it. Those two are too close. So let's just place a couple more digits to finish off the grid. And that is how you solve Philip Newman's coping strategies. I hope you enjoyed that one. Check it out in the link below. Uh, it is down there in the description along with the hat times and the dinosaur of the day. Enjoy, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.